Yeah, no. Good evening, everyone. Today we have event of how to become Android developer in 2022 with uh, Harish Nayak. He's an Android developer, co-head at Google Development Sprint Club at DTU. So welcome, brother. How are you doing? I'm fine. Sure. How are you? Thank you I'm for good. the introduction. I'm good. I'm good. So yes, please start the event. Okay. So uh, hi everyone, I'm Harish Nayak. Uh, as Shore mentioned, I'm uh, Android head at Google Developer Students Club at Delhi Technology University. So um, I guess everyone here is uh, interested about Android development and I hope that uh, you have some idea about Android development or if you do not have uh, any idea about it, uh, it doesn't matter. We'll be sharing uh, what is Android development uh, and um, well, just be with us and uh, let's uh, start the session. So uh, a little about me, uh, I am uh, a pre pilot year student from Delhi Technology University. Uh, I have worked on cross-platform uh, mobile application for like two years and uh, I have mentored students for uh, Android Study Jams, uh, which was a program held by Google Developer Students Club, uh, where we mentored uh, students to start their Android journey and uh, uh, some students build their uh, first Android app that was submitted to Google uh, through that event. I've also worked in open source uh, and have mentored in uh, GirlScript Summer of Code uh, for uh, cross-platform Flutter development. And uh, I've also published a chapter in Springer publication. So uh, the flow of session would be, uh, first we'll be talking about what is Android development. Uh, we'll be having some introduction about it. Uh, then we'll be uh, looking at is Android development relevant today? Uh, because if you know, Android development started uh, a decade earlier, uh, like in 2009 or something. So uh, how relevant is it today? And uh, is it uh, like, would it be beneficial for you guys to learn Android development in 2022? Then we'll be looking at uh, what, if you are doing that, uh, how should you start? You should go with Java or Kotlin. Uh, the two major languages for Android development. Uh, then we'll be looking at a roadmap and then uh, we'll be looking at the uh, required hardware for uh, Android development as you might know some of you uh, that Android development uh, is done in Android Studio which is a product of IntelliJ uh, JetBrains. Uh, so what are the specifications uh, your computer should hold? that are required for Android Studio. We'll be looking into that. And then we'll finally uh, closing with the resources uh, that you need uh, to study Android development. Okay, so let's start. What is Android development? If you Google uh, this term Android development, you would see that Android software development is a process by which applications are created uh, for devices running Android operating system. Quite simple. Uh, Android apps can be written in Kotlin, Java, or C++, JNI. JNI is Java native interface. Uh, and Android uh, software development kit while using other languages are also possible. Other languages such as you might have seen Flutter framework, which is uh, which uses Dart language. Um, you have also might have seen Xamarin. Uh, you might have also seen Flutter, uh, that React Native. So these are other frameworks that can be used to uh, build Android apps as well as those uh, later three that I talked about, Flutter, Xamarin, and uh, React Native that are also used for cross-platform development. Uh, that is iOS and with Flutter, you can also build desktop and web apps as well. Moving on, uh, uh, is Android development relevant today? Uh, what is the scope for Android development in future? And is it a good career option? Let's uh, look at some facts. So Android shares more than 80% of the world's mobile market share. If you see, uh, in India as well, you would see less percentage of Apple uh, iOS devices. And if you see it on a map, then you would find that most uh, countries have Android uh, users while less percentage you would find for iOS. And uh, as you can see, there are 3.5 billion users for Android and more than 3 million apps on Google Play Store alone. Uh, major companies like Flipkart, Amazon are also investing more in Android. Uh, just uh, like last year or so, Flipkart changed it, uh, changed its uh, tech stack to Kotlin. And there is also one good case study about it. You can have a look at that. Okay, so here's a graph for uh, growth of Android. As you see, 
uh, Android started in 2009, which was less than uh, like 10% uh, of the market share. Then it rose to about 81, 85, 87%. Uh, of the market share. So you can see what is the, how Android has grown uh, on its own. So uh, you can see that the scope is increasing, right? So why Android has a lot of opportunities? Firstly, Android applications are always in demand. Uh, even in the startups that you see that are rising, you can see that all startups need to have one mobile application, right? Either they have a, a web page or some mobile application even if even if there is a business many businesses are uh, switching towards digital platforms and in order to come to a digital platform they need an android app or an ios app uh, but to start with as they initially needed a web page but now to make their uh, business more like uh, uh, feasible to the customers they need to have an uh, app where on they can uh, take payments or maybe they can uh, get their things selected, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So Android app is in big demand uh, in the coming, uh, in this time and in coming future as well. Android is open source and it is very easy to adapt. Uh, if you do not know what open source is, so open source is um, when any software's code is readily available to normal users. Okay, you might have known about GitHub, uh, GitHub is a platform um, where you can put up your code. You can make it public or keep it private. So if it is a public uh, repository on uh, GitHub, so anyone can view that. And if they can also, uh, they can also add issues or pull requests as uh, that is, if you have changed uh, something in the code, then you can ask them to modify their code according to you. Like uh, if you find some bug, in their code and uh, you want to help them or uh, you want the okay i can put it as an issue and i can change that you can do that this is known as a pull request so android is open source um, anyone can change uh, in uh, that code base obviously it will be maintained by the users of uh, the maintainers of android but you can add a pull request so that is open source um, in Android development, there's a little cost of investment, as I talked earlier as well, uh, that in order to work on Android, you need Android Studio. Um, and for Android Studio, you need some specifications uh, that your laptop should have or your PC should have. Then only you can uh, easily work on it. So there's a little uh, investment, but it is big on return. If you make an app and you publish it on Google Play Store, then uh, if it works, if you have a uh, thousand plus downloads, then you can maybe uh, add in some ads in it and well, uh, you can earn money. And also, um, if you are good at uh, Android development, obviously there are many, many companies that are looking for Android developers and uh, you could be hired. So it is high on return. Android is a great uh, development uh, framework. Uh, if you would, uh, maybe compare it with other tech stack and you would find Android to be more, uh, you know, uh, you could learn more in Android. Uh, the architecture is quite uh, good uh, for Android. You would see that uh, it is said that Google's Android architecture is one of the best architectures for mobile application development. Okay. And it also helps to create uh, interesting new projects. If you have some project in mind and you want to make an app for it, uh, Android, you can go for it. Okay. So a fun fact here, uh, can anyone tell me uh, which is the first smartphone for Android? You can use the chat box. Anyone? Samsung one, okay. Anyone else? Any other guesses? HTC, okay. Can, can you tell me HTC, which uh, model for HTC? Okay. So uh, Sheikh uh, Mehboob Ali, 
uh, i hope i am pronouncing that right so he says htc yes uh, you are right he says don't HTC, remember okay <laughs> <laughs> htc uh, dream uh, was the first uh, smartphone that worked on android and it was uh, commercially made available in 2008 september 23 that was uh, announced uh, then it is also known as the mobile g1 uh, and it looked like something like this so it had buttons as well it had uh, the screen as well so uh, remember those blackberry uh, models as well they had those has buttons and uh, touch screen as well so kind of that uh, that kind of a model but uh, a little prior to it so it looked like uh, something like this okay moving on now if you are starting with android uh, as i think that i was able to convince you that why you need to uh, start with android uh, why is it a good career to take up so if you are starting with android what is the language you should choose for coding android apps so it could be kotlin or it could be java so when uh, google started with android it uh, adapted java as the main language for android application development why java because java is one of the oldest object oriented languages and it is easy to learn and it works well with dalvik virtual machine which is inspired by java virtual machine jvm uh, if you might have known and it uh, which makes it portable for almost any device uh, and operating system now what jvm basically does is uh, it creates its own uh, like byte code and it could be uh, the byte code could run on any other uh, any devices it does it is not uh, device specific the code is not device specific so it could run on any uh, any devices so hence it it is uh, portable so uh, that is why java was taken up and then uh, google began building android system uh, and java was one of the most suitable languages but then why did we have kotlin then if java was doing so well why do we uh, need kotlin so kotlin uh, is now the official language why because uh, there are so many factors but first is interoperability kotlin is 100% interoperable with java and supports great interoperability with jvm environments okay uh, safety android apps that contain uh, kotlin code are 20% less likely to crash okay and also if you see kotlin code is quite concise uh, than the java code in java you have to uh, do so many things you have to like even uh, for declaring a variable you need to write so many things okay public static something 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 okay in kotlin uh, you just need to like uh, say val you uh, need to say the variable name and you can go ahead okay so the code is quite concise in uh, kotlin and um that is why kotlin is appreciated more and today uh, kotlin is uh, the official language for android development by google so if you are starting today with android i would suggest that you go for uh, kotlin because uh, the uh, latest libraries that are coming uh, for android support they are also written in kotlin and it will be beneficial for you if you uh, know the know how of kotlin but if you are already into android development and you coming from uh, java then then also i would recommend you to uh, switch to kotlin because it is very easy to switch to kotlin as well and uh, as future uh, times comes and uh, kotlin is a better choice in uh, comparison to java people are still uh, working on java if you uh, ask me uh, if you would see any uh, companies uh, job descriptions if you, if they are hiring uh, app developers uh, android develop, app developers you would see java mentioned in the skills uh, preferred skills this is because uh, due to legacy of java uh, earlier all the android apps as i said were coded in uh, java and due to legacy reasons uh there's still uh, java is preferred but kotlin is uh, i would say a must if you are starting with android development okay so now let's uh, talk about uh, the resources so 
uh, Google only provides as you know, uh, Android is uh, provided by Google is a product product of Google. So uh, in order for you students to learn Android development, Google only provides a course material and uh, you can find it on, uh, I, would, I would share the link uh, that is uh, developers.google.com uh, slash uh, Kotlin course, something like that. So I'll share that. You can see uh, that they have Android basics in Kotlin. So the course is built in Kotlin. It has some units and it is uh, about seven units, seven to eight units long uh, course. And you can follow that. Everything uh, you would find in documentation for Android, you would get in there. And as a beginner, I would say that this is the best resource anyone can have. If you know how to study documentation, you can go for that. Even if you, uh, you know, are starting out with Android and you are not comfortable in uh, going through documentations and all, you can start with this as well because it has it has some um, like pathways. Okay, so like if you would see, it is a welcome to uh, uh, Android Basics in Kotlin. The, the first video would be that. Then it is build your first Android apps. Then it is like first uh, program and a birthday card. So the in, in a step by step uh, basis, you would get to know how you can code in code uh, Android application, and you have uh, seven to eight uh, units that you can follow, and it is the best resource I can say uh, that anyone can follow. But again, if you are not comfortable with written text, you can also go for some videos uh, for Android development. Uh, there are many videos uh, on YouTube you would find um, that give you a complete playlist how you can start with Android development. Uh, you have Philip Lackner. It is, for me, it is uh, one of the best uh, play, uh, channels for Android app development. Uh, he has mentioned so many playlists for MVVM architecture, for code routines, for um, basic Android application, uh, Android application with Firebase, uh, with Gator, making your own servers, so many things. So uh, if I can write it on chat, it is, okay. Uh, I would not comment on that. Okay. Yeah, he got kicked. Uh -huh. True. Okay, fine. Philip Lackner is uh, one of the, uh, I would say, my personal favorite channels on YouTube that you can find, uh, which has best resource for Android app development. If you are a beginner, you want to start, even if you are intermediate Android uh, app developer, you can go with that. Uh, in Android, you have so many things like, for example, uh, when you are uh, pulling data from a database, Okay, you need uh, APIs, etc. Okay, you can have retrofit, or uh, you want to have some dependency injection. You can have uh, dagger hilt. So uh, these terms and these uh, methods are described well in uh, Philip Lackner's videos, and uh, go check that out. Uh, I would recommend if you want to go for videos uh, rather than text. But if you want text uh, and you can follow documentation, which is which should be the preferred way if you are starting out any uh, development, uh, you can go with this uh, course material, and uh, I think you would like it. Okay, moving on. So, Android Studio, uh, which is the official tool to build Android applications. These are the specs. Uh, minimum six specs uh, that are required for Android app development. You, you can, you can, it can also work on 4 GB RAM, but uh, from my own experience, I would tell you that don't do that. Don't do that because um, when I bought this uh, laptop, it was i3 generation, i3 uh, fifth generation, I think, and uh, 4 GB RAM, and I installed Android Studio on it. It worked. It worked. I wouldn't say it did not work, but um, it was quite slow and uh, the laptop got heated quite often. So I would not prefer that uh, to you. But uh, if you have an uh, 8 GB RAM, it is uh, quite well and it uh, does uh, give you a good performance. Okay. So I think 
I have uh, covered all the major points. Uh, I have told you about why you should uh, start with Android. Why is it relevant today? Why do companies uh, are hire? Why are companies hiring Android uh, app developers? I have also told you uh, if you are starting with Android app development, uh, with what language you should start? You should go with Kotlin or you should Java. You, you should go with Kotlin if you are starting now. Uh, but if you are uh, already into Android app development with uh, Java, I think you can switch uh, to Kotlin as well. I've also covered what are the specifications uh, that are required for Android uh, app development if you're starting. Uh, I have also discussed uh, the resources that uh, you would be needing to start Android development. If there are any questions now, uh, I'm open to questions. You can use the chat box uh, for that. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, this yeah. question is not related to Android, but I would like to answer. See, um, Firebase can act as a backend. It, uh, it gives so many other features uh, that MongoDB does not give. MongoDB is just a database uh, that is a NoSQL database. And Firebase also has database, but it will give you a real-time database. It will also give you storage. If you also give you uh, authentication, it will also give you um, cloud messaging, push notifications, so many things. Uh, and a backend service as well. You can also code uh, your own backend service and put it up on Firebase, which, which will cost uh, you something. But again, uh, Firebase is a whole uh, product for backend service. And MongoDB is just a database, I believe. There is a question. Any other questions? Yeah, there is a question. Mm -hmm. um, which um, mm -hmm. I have i5 6th generation sir with 8 GB RAM. I think he is asking that is it good to go or not? Perfect, perfect, perfect. You can uh, uh, from the official website and I think you would be good to go. Uh, uh, with uh, Android Studio, you would also need uh, to download Java and JVM uh, in your uh, laptop and PC, and then you can start with the development. It's not like if you are working on Kotlin, uh, you do not need a JVM. You would require a JVM uh, to start with. Any other questions? Guys, if you have any question, then just put it in the chat section. Yes, please. I would love to answer. And I think uh, such a session uh, should be interactive as well. Uh, you can ask us anything and I think uh, there should not be any uh, shyness over here I think huh as I said Java needs to be downloaded uh, if you're using Kotlin as well because you know um, if you are downloading Java it also downloads the JVM and uh, when you are uh, building the application, it requires that. So Java is also open source. I don't think so. Um, let, I have never searched about it. Let me just check. I don't think it is open source. Yeah, okay, it is. Java is an open source uh, and has a worldwide community invested in guiding and continued development. Java is open source too. Okay, one thing I have not mentioned uh, in here is uh, cross-platform uh, frameworks as well. Uh, Shorit, uh, do I have time? Yes, yes we have about that. that. We have a lot of time. Ah, sure. Okay. So, um, People also start with if you if you do not uh, have uh, the specifications for uh, Android Studio, you can also go for VS Code. Uh, but in VS Code, you will not find uh, you know I don't think you can code uh, native Android applications, but you can go for cross-platform applications. So uh, cross-platform uh, frameworks, you can have Flutter, you can have React Native, you can have Xamarin. Uh, Flutter is again a product of Google and um, 
in that framework uh, language is used dot dot uh, was introduced in 2011 by google itself and it is again one of uh, the best emerging frameworks you can have for cross cross platform development it can uh, once you have uh, written a code the same code can be used for android it can be used for um ios it can be used for web apps it can be used for desktop applications windows applications so many uh, you know applications for uh, from the single code base so if you do not have uh, these specs for uh, downloading android studio you can i uh, recommend you if you and, and, and if you want to start with mobile application development then you can go for uh, flutter and people also uh, would recommend you react native but in my personal opinion i think flutter is a better choice because flutter as i said is emerging and it is expanding its uh, horizons and uh, with a single code base you can have multiple uh, applications so uh, you can start with flutter if you want to go uh, towards web uh, web uh, applications also you can start with react native because uh, react if you if you are learning react native you would also have a knowledge of react and uh, companies do ask react uh, for front end development if you are going into website development so i have told you both the things if you want to start with mobile application development particularly i think you should go with flutter and you do not have uh, specification for android studio so go with flutter vs code uh but again you would need android studio at some point of time so it it is better than to have that but if you want to uh go for website development as well along with mobile application development then go for react native you would also have a uh, learning of react and you can go for that as well um i think that is all for cross platform uh applications well also one thing uh, like if you are starting with uh, android you would see if someone has already started with android you would see that there are two uh, two things one you have to design a layout in xml and then you have to design the uh, basic code how would the app perform okay so the two things you have to code uh, in different files but now what they have done is they have combined both if you would see uh, android jetpack compose okay so when jetpack compose you can uh, create the ui and the working of the app in a single file okay so this has this is inspired by flutter where in flutter you had in single uh, file you could you could uh, make the ui and the working of the app so as i said earlier as well that flutter and android again are both products of google and uh, they are both uh trying to do the same thing uh because android was earlier uh, present and flutter is a relatively newer framework and in flutter they did the ui and the working in one single file and uh inspired by that android is doing the same thing with android jetpack compose where you can create the ui and the uh, program files in the same uh, file itself so it is again a very good uh, feature i must say uh, that is provided by google any other questions so i think they don't have any other question you have answered all the questions for them <laughs> <laughs> see uh, i think we have time if if, if anyone wants to uh, ask anything about development in general also uh, i could answer but it's it's again your choice okay tell me uh, how many of you are uh, what is the i would say um, like are you in first years first year second year third year if you could answer that first year okay how many of you are you uh, from first year generally they are from uh, first year generally mm -hmm. 
Okay. So if you are starting out with development, I, I must say that uh, Android is a very good um, platform for you because you know once you are uh, once you have learned what how you can create Android apps, I think the later development journey would be very easy because you know if for Android you need to learn some particular uh, architecture. Okay, as I talked, MVVM architecture. MVVM architecture is model view view model architecture. So these architectures help you understand how things are working. Actually, you know, if you if you will start with any other frameworks like Flutter, React Native, etc., you would not get the absolute knowledge of uh, the architectures. But if you are working with Android, in particular, I believe that you would get a uh, clarity about uh, the architectures. Of how things are working. Dart, uh, framework is uh, built on like uh, it works upon uh, Dart language, and uh, it is again a very good uh, framework for cross-platform application. But again, uh, I would suggest if you are just Starting out with mobile application development, you can go with Android application, uh, Android development, because in Android, you would get to learn about the architectures. You would actually learn uh, how Android uh, OS works. You would also get a uh, you know, thorough understanding about it. So I would suggest you go for Android development. Any other questions? Any other point you would uh, like me to highlight? Sure, if you have any other point that you would like me to highlight. Uh, no, actually, I don't know much about uh, Android development because I, I tried it in the first year, but I didn't like it much. That's why I shipped to web development. So I don't know much about it. Huh, it is, uh, if you, you know, if you are starting out with uh, development in general, you might find uh, Android a little um, scary, I must say. But again, uh, the joy of having a mobile application, you know, that uh, that is uh, on your mobile phone uh, that you can show around to people or maybe uh, upload it on Google Play. I think that joy for me was uh, the one thing that uh, why I started uh, Android development and not go in web. Because, uh, you know, I, I got a kick, as you, you can say, uh, when I uploaded my first uh, mobile application on uh, Google Play Store. So that's something uh, that's really great. I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, brother, um, they are they are done with their questions. They don't have any other question. So we should end this mm -hmm. event. If you don't have any other point to be discussed. Um, I think I've uh, spoken about major points, uh, but still if anyone has anyone has any questions, uh, I have uh, listed my. Huh. You can also earn badges uh, when you are do doing that course uh, for uh, the course that is provided by uh, Google itself. So when you complete those pathways, you get some badges as well. So that is there also. Let me uh, let me put your LinkedIn link so that if uh -huh. anyone want to connect, they can get with you. You can connect with me. You can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, I have listed uh, my links in the PPT as well. I will share the PPT with Shore and I think uh, you can send it further. Yes. Students. Okay. So if you want to uh, view the PPT once more, you can have a look on that as well. So thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you brother for providing such great information to our audience, to our community. Thank you for uh, having me. And I think this was a very good experience for me as well uh, to talk about Android. And um, thank you. Thank you brother. Thank you everyone. See you soon. Bye bye. -bye.